number. So I'm Wendy and I, we're both from Family Search and we're so excited to talk with people today. And we are gonna talk all about the wiki. And Amber, yes. like tell us a little bit about you and like, why are you interested in family history? Like, where did that come from? Oh, I feel like everybody kind of has their own story about yes. family history. Um, I really didn't care that much about family history until I was like 14. Um, family so Search had- yeah, it's a long time ago. Uh, well, I don't know. I'm still young, oh, relatively. Yes. But, um, my uh, mom was showing me new.familysearch.org, the old version, when it first launched. And um, I thought it was really cool. And I, as a teenager, I just wanted to see how far back I could go uh, in my tree because I thought it was so cool uh, to go back to like 980. Yeah. And, you know, who knows how much of that uh, is accurate. But um, it was just really fun. And so, Ever since then, I uh, really started liking history and I took history classes in high school, but I didn't want to study just history in college. Uh, and so I ended up going to BYU and I studied family history there and it was great. I loved it. And now I'm here. And now you're here. Okay. So we're so happy that our guests are joining us and let us know where you guys are joining us from. We'd love to hear. Yes. Um, Amber and I are actually just maybe not even a mile apart. We're both downtown Salt Lake City yeah. <laughs> dwellers. And Amber, as we wait for people to come on and tell us where they're joining us from, how are you coping with quarantine? What are you doing at your place to stay sane? Oh gosh. I mean, we have, we watch a lot of movies, done okay. a lot of puzzles. Um, and I just over the weekend visited my grandma and uh, she has a bunch of her parents, my great grandparents' old records. And I just got a record player. It's yep. sitting here behind me kind of open. And so I have a bunch of old records now because that's the cool thing with the kids is to have records. So yes. yeah. Okay, what, what kind of music do you know? Uh, I have some right here. I can show, show you some us, examples. Show us. And then guys, I promise we're going to get started. We're going to learn stuff today. But I think one of the reasons these live streams um, are here is so you can connect with our guests and get to know them a little better. And we love to hear from you. And Amber's going to share records that she has recently decided to. Yeah. Gather. And how many I record players like I have record players and I love <laughs> records. I had Donnie and Marie Osmond going coconuts oh. uh, like my favorite in high school. Yes. We have like, um, I don't see. I'm just so young. I don't know who any of these people are, and this is probably okay. backwards. Tell you. Is, but like oh, yeah. Miller. Yes. Look at the design on that. That's. Oh fantastic. yeah. Do I see it again? Should we go again? Oh, look at that greatest hits, Glenn Miller. Uh, I mean, yeah. I guess it's Glenn Miller's greatest hits. We have Sound of Music. I have like one of the big like book versions of Holiday Inn. Oh my gosh. Like the musical that has like the multiple pages of like multiple records inside. That's probably worse. There's a lot in here. I have a great big pile, so I'm going to try and get through some of it uh, in the next it, few days. This sounds like a great quarantine activity. Let us know, guys, what you are doing and where you're joining from. I am checking with our moderators to make sure that everyone can see and hear us. Okay, so Amber, I love that. I think that's and the puzzles. I'm, I'm sure like everyone is buying puzzles, doing puzzles, baking. Um, yes. Apparently, some people are exercising, you know. I'm not <laughs> exercising. <laughs> and family be. history, right? Like family history. It's a, it's a, it's such obviously something that we think is a great pastime. Oh, yeah. Okay. So here's what I think we're going to do today. Um, for those of you who are with us, first of all, um, we are going to talk about using the wiki as a resource. And this was something that was mentioned in a couple of our previous streams as we've had library some of our library guests on, and this is just a fantastic resource. And so Amber has quite a few things that she's gonna cover. If you have questions, please post them in the comments and our moderators will help respond. And these are recorded, so you can always come back and watch them if you miss something. So we're gonna talk about a little bit about what is the wiki, some tips on how to use the wiki. Um, and, and Amber, you tell us about your job. Like your job is part of the team that supports the wiki, right? Yes, I. we have a team. Um, we're currently housed in the Family History Library on Temple Square uh, in Salt Lake City. We uh, There's about 10-ish, around 10 of us, um, that work on the wiki. The wiki houses a lot of um, the how to do genealogy kind of content for FamilySearch. 
-hmm. And we are constantly adding new articles and new content with resources for people doing genealogy all over the world. So that's what we're doing. Give us some context about how much content is part of and what first let's talk about what is the wiki like it kind of explain what that is. Yes, so a lot of people don't know really what the wiki is they probably have heard all oh, the family search wiki like many times but might not have experience with it or really know how to use it or why they should use it. Um, the family search wiki is a I like to call it kind of an encyclopedia. Um, of articles about how to do genealogy. So a little bit of small history at the beginning of the Family Search Wiki, it essentially was like a housing place for a lot of the research outlines and things from the family yeah. history library, the content that they would give to patrons who came mm -hmm. um, with resources of how to do genealogy. So they initially put them online to have them available to people that maybe couldn't come to the library. And then it just kind of grew over time as some of the research specialists added more content to it and as the public submitted more information on how to do genealogy and now it has, it has just kind of expanded into this beautiful massive genealogy encyclopedia. And it's a community effort too right? Don't you have outside contributors? We do yeah so we have um, our team of about 10 employees and then we have um, between 30 and 40 ish uh, missionaries and volunteers that help us as well. And then it is also a public tool, um, a wiki uh, by nature like Wikipedia if you if you've used that before uh, is a community a collaborative tool and so the idea is some of the content can come from individuals in the community. And so I think in the last month we've had maybe about 100 unique contributors to the wiki um, and it kind of varies per month but we get about that many people that help add content for us so it's That's very great good. it's a really rich resource um, and tell us about like how many pages that exist in the wiki to give us an idea of how big it is yeah the wiki has gotten bigger uh in the last several years i feel like you see a little graph chart and it's got slow growth and then it kind of shoots up really high we're in that shoot up really high section um, right now, our English wiki has over 92,000 pages in it, which <gasps> has just exploded. Wow. Okay. Give me some context for how to understand that. <laughs> That's a lot. It is a lot of pages. So 92,000, I had to look this up beforehand because I wasn't sure. If you took 92,000 like dollar bills, okay. um, I feel like most countries have the same, around the same size of dollar bills, um, and you lined them all up along and made a big long line of dollar bills it would stretch up almost nine miles uh, or about 14 kilometers oh my gosh okay okay thank you for that that helps yeah. I think it's a lot of dollar bills everybody <laughs> understand that and how long has the wiki been around so i think i wasn't here i wish i was yeah. here when it was first around um 2008 is the okay. last number that i'm told so, so like we're a little years. over 12 years old wow okay i love that oh. i love that i love that okay we are gonna dive in um and we are going to talk about like how is this how is this a benefit like what what can people expect to get out of using the wiki like when you guys create content you're really looking to understand and solve like our patron problems right yes so our goal is to kind of just be a landing place for all the record types how to do research mm -hmm. um for the unique situations that people will come across when they do genealogy. Mm -hmm. So people that typically will use the wiki are those who maybe aren't just kind of browsing family tree or just kind of casually adding information. It's mm -hmm. usually those who are trying to find the record types and how to read them and um, what we call in genealogy, we call methodology mm -hmm. or um, the strategy or the way that you find information based off different kinds of documents. So we try to provide all the possible resources you could need for doing genealogy, any websites, any archives, um, any collections of genealogies, record types uh, for the genealogist. So, so how many different types, record types exist? Like just throw out a number. Like, oh, there's so many. Um, it depends on the country. Okay. Uh, each country varies in how you do genealogy there. Um, the way you do genealogy in the United States, even per state in the United States is so different um, versus how you do genealogy in England versus Italy versus, you know, any country is different. Um, but as far as like maybe for, oh, what's a good example of a page? A page in the United States, like Indiana. Okay. Um, record types for Indiana, specific articles on record types, we probably have 
20, I think, 20 plus. I didn't count beforehand. Yeah, no, this, this, is yeah. this is estimating. This is estimating. Because I think that helps people know, like, why do you have to have a wiki page for different regions? Because it's all so different. Yeah, it's true. And we'll have, you know, some country pages in the wiki might have, you know, way more than that uh, for record mm -hmm. types. So total number of record types, I have no idea in the wiki because I'm not, unfortunately, an expert in every country. No, but you are not yet. an expert and we're just thrilled that you're here. Um, okay, so I think you're helping us understand why and when people would use the wiki. And then let's just jump right into, um, yes. let's, re and let's screen share. Our viewers okay. will love to see um, you as our guest um, kind of take us through. And so let's just go right into the wiki. Sure. And talk about. I will share my screen. Okay. And, and it looks like um, we're glad that everyone is here. We've got Australia here. We've got some more people here visiting. We're so glad you're here. Okay, Amber, take this away. All right. So Please here we have here. the Family Search Wiki. Actually, I probably should open incognito just so it doesn't save all of my. Oh, look, we've got a little incognito window there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first, how do we even go to the Family Search Wiki? Um, I just typed in wiki.familysearch.org up there in the corner, uh, but I go to this every day. So that's not something that the um, casual user might do all the time. Uh, but in the Family Search header up here, you'll see underneath search, we have search. You've seen records before, you've seen images, family tree. Uh, we're Research Wiki. We're right down here at the bottom of that search tab. So if you click research wiki, it will take you here. This is our wiki main page. And you can see here, this is our total number of articles that we mentioned at the beginning. Oh yeah. So 93,000, it looks like here, probably the next couple of weeks. So come back and check and you can celebrate with us when we hit 93,000. Um, so this is what the wiki looks like. Now, one of the things that people often do when they come to the wiki is they try to search for their individual ancestor. Oh, uh, they'll say, oh my, I, I know. It happens all the time. People will search for, oh, my ancestor is Charles Jones and I really want to find him and the wiki I've heard is amazing. And so we should search for Charles Jones in the wiki. But that's not something you're going to find. You're going to be really disappointed. Um, the wiki does not have individuals inside it. Uh, and instead it's a collection of databases you can then use to find your ancestor. So I have a list here of uh, examples of what I should show you because I, I had to go through beforehand and say, what are some of our best pages that can give you the best idea of what the wiki yeah. is. This is so um, exciting. You know, something else that we love learning too, Amber, is like insider tips and things that happen behind the scenes. So yeah. take it away. Okay. So the first thing, um, before I talk about tips, I will tell you this main page of the wiki, we are going to revamp this entirely in the next couple of months, hopefully. So this will be different. If you go to this, you know, anytime, especially near like in 2021, I'm hoping we'll at least have this up by 2021 uh, soon. We'll have it soon. Um, it will look different than this, but this is the current version of our main page. And you can see in these search tips down here, um, it's important to start searching with broad localities and then narrow down to small ones. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you're searching for like your particular city, um, like I, one of the towns that I grew up in is called Wellsville. Um, we probably don't have a wiki page for Wellsville. Everyone who's from Wellsville is like raising their hands. Yes. Um, I actually don't know why I can't see you guys, but um, I grew up in Wellsville. And so if I typed in Wellsville, we might not have a page specific enough for that town. So it's important to start broad and then narrow your way down. So I might start with Utah or I might start with uh, Indiana is the example I gave earlier. Mm -hmm. I have my little box of, uh, this is the Zoom box where I can see Wendy's face. Um, so I'll come up here and I'll type in Indiana. Mm -hmm. All right, so you can see that I type in Indiana and all of these options down here in this search pop up. Now you can also use this main search box here. Um, they both search the same thing. They both search wiki articles um, and it searches by title of the article. So if I want Indiana, I want Indiana United States genealogy. Let's go here. Okay, hold on. For some reason, I think there's a little bit of a delay with your screen. Um, it still shows the main wiki page. Is oh, that no. Should I go back? Um, just maybe refresh it or something. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we'll I should. Okay. Let me try something. Okay. And um, while you're doing that, we had John Huff last week and he is a product manager over this. Oh, perfect. 
the search team. Oh, there we go. And he talked about a tip that Debbie Gertler had taught him, which is less is more. So I think you're saying something similar yeah. and you're saying search by state or region as opposed to town. Okay, exactly. Here we are. So I'm gonna go through again really quick how I searched that because I, I feel like it lost me somehow. So let's come back. Okay. Okay, so here's the Wiki homepage. We've seen this already. I was just here. Uh, you can search either using this main search box in the middle uh, or this corner one. Um, I'm on the Wiki constantly, so I gravitate towards the corner one, but they both will search the same thing. They'll both search the Family Search Wiki. So I'm going to search Indiana. Okay, so here's what I was talking about before that you couldn't see. Um, it gives a drop down of recognized articles that have the word Indiana in it. Uh, the Family Search Wiki searches by article title, which is kind of important if you're searching for, um, you know, kind of a more specialized word and we don't have an article title with that word in it, it might not come up. Mm -hmm. um, and that's unfortunately just due to the way that um, our platform media wiki is set up. We use the same thing as Wikipedia. Wikipedia also only searches article titles. Um, but we do have Indiana and we have lots of options here. So I'm going to go ahead and click Indiana United States genealogy. Okay, so here we have the Indiana page. So this can often be overwhelming to people who haven't used the wiki before. So I'm going to try and break this down a little and show you uh, in chunks. So this is a little more digestible. Okay. Um, so every state in the United States, every country, um, and some places in Europe that we have more localized pages for like uh, counties in England or um, counties in the Scandinavian countries. Um, in this case, this is our landing page for Indiana. So we have brief information about Indiana. And then we have some getting started articles. So maybe you're brand new to Indiana research and you have maybe only researched a lot in Florida. Uh, research is different in between the states. And so maybe you wanna know, you know, I really want a step-by-step -step Indiana research guide from 1900 to the present or from 1850 to 1900. Um, how to find birth, marriage and death articles. So we try to break it down a little easier right here near the top of um, some ideas for getting started as opposed to diving deep in case you're not ready for that. And I like how this matches what a, a patron or a user is trying to do. So think about, you know, who you're looking for, what problem you're trying to solve, and that would be a great way. And so it seems to me that it's better to have a lot of variety in these types of things as opposed to like one big long thing. It's so true. It's good it's to true, know. Because we can't tell people what to do really. I mean, we can give you suggestions, but everyone's gonna come to these pages with different goals. Someone might come to this page saying, my great, great grandparents were married in Indiana and I really want to find that marriage record. Um, but some people might come here for birth or for death. Uh, so we try to give lots of options to kind of fit um, the categories of, of information people will be looking for. Perfect. So the next thing I want to feature is, um, these are online genealogy records buttons. Mm -hmm. So we put them in blue. Sometimes we call them our magic blue button. Uh, and these, I love that. it's so much fun. And they do feel like magic because when you click on one, it will show you all the online collections for all record types for that place, just in a big list. So we have all the collections online, whether it's Family Search, whether Ancestry has some, whether My Heritage has some, a state archive all the marriages over on this side, we've got military records, uh, deaths, we've got African-American specific databases. I mean, look at all these topics. These are just links and links for days. Such good resource. Yeah, which this can also be overwhelming. Oh, so you don't I'm have to go through this list. Um, <laughs> but we, for people who maybe they say, I, I already know what a census is. I don't need to learn about what a census is. Just take me to the census is for Indiana or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, we can, so then our magic blue button and just lists of all Indiana specific uh, collections online. Okay, that's so fantastic. A little bit dizzy. I'll scroll back up to the top here really quick. And that's what you call the magic blue button that's right below the getting started articles. Is that is. are the other state pages layout similar? Yes, states, every state in the United States and every country in the world uh, will have their own magic blue button. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Very exciting. So Do we have our own. Like, can I get one in my house? What can I have a magic blue button that will it like might cost you? <laughs> <laughs> you can come install one. That sounds great. So that's our magic blue button. Uh, that's one of our patrons' favorite uh, features of the wiki. So I thought I would talk about that. 
Love that. Um, further down, we have a clickable map. Every county in Indiana also has its own page. So the fun just never ends. Um, if we click on any of these counties, this map is clickable, but there also is a list of counties down here as well. So if you know your ancestors, we're from Marshall County, Indiana, uh, there's county specific resources for your ancestor uh, that might not be in the statewide um, list of resources, it might be more localized. So very, very fun. Possibilities are endless. Yes. Okay, so one more thing I wanna talk about is this over here on the right hand side, this is our sidebar. Um, can you see all of it? My little zoom window that has Wendy in the corner is blocking it a little bit. So oh yeah, we can see we can see down to record types, but not background. I can just see where it says Indiana background. Awesome. Okay, I never know if that zoom window is covering for you guys as well. Sorry. Okay, so over here, these are the record types I kind of mentioned at the beginning when Wendy asked how many record types we have, and it just varies. Um, but look at these for Indiana. If your ancestor was adopted in Indiana, we have an article about United States adoption or correctional institutions, naturalization and citizenship. I mean, there's so many articles for record types that are specific to what your ancestor could have appeared in. Mm -hmm. um, court records, maybe they uh, got into some legal trouble. You know, where do I find those court records? And we can tell you. So if I open the naturalization and citizenship, when you have immigrant ancestors and they became citizens, they went through a process called naturalization. But how do I find that information? Uh, we have a whole article about it specific to Indiana, just wow. all the online resources and any information you could need to know about uh, that topic. Okay, so show us below record types because it looks like the sidebar had some other interesting things in there. Oh, it does, it does. Okay, so we have some background. Mm -hmm. uh, the background is typically a little bit more extensive for countries that aren't the United States because we are written kind of from an English perspective. So background for other countries, I'll show you a country uh, here in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, might have some more things, but we've got uh, biography. So maybe if we have collections of individual biographies for uh, Indiana residents that could be on there, gazetteers, uh, yeah. maps, history, migration patterns, that's important in United States research. Um, we've got information for specific uh, ethnicities or groups of people, uh, and then we list archives and libraries. So we have lots and lots of information, and this is all just for Indiana. These so, same sidebars are for every state yeah. and country in the world. We had Tim um, Bingaman on, and he talked about, you know, just some basic, really great research stuff, and he talked about the importance of the wiki. And um, and I think do people other than genealogists use this and family history people use this like it's very educational as well. That's a really good point. I think I mean we have no way of knowing for sure. A lot of family history centers around the world use our wiki. Um, family history center pages are housed within the wiki, so they use and create their own resources there. Um, a lot of people Google into us actually. Um, actually, the wiki has had, I just got this stat today uh, from one of my coworkers, is since January of 2020, and we're in May, so five and a half months, uh, the wiki has had 1.3 million unique visitors, um, whether that's genealogists or people just Googling, um, Googling my ancestors from Peru, how do I do genealogy there, and a wiki article pops up and they find us. So it's typically people who want to do research that find the wiki and that use it because that's what our purpose is. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Okay. Is there any other buttons? I thought the community um, next to the blue button, the community button was interesting. What? Talk about that. Yes. So maybe we'll do one of these in the future on the community. That would be really cool. So we have a purple button next to our blue one called ask the community. So family search actually has um, some research groups online called the family search community and others that are people helping people um, kind of like Facebook groups if you've ever been in a Facebook group uh, mm -hmm. you can post questions and people can answer uh, so it's a good way to get some research help so we have an alphabetized list of countries over here so if your ancestors are from let's pick a country let's pick Denmark that's my yes, favorite it's a one. popular one uh, Denmark the family search community has a research group uh, on a separate tool called uh, Nordic uh, Family History Research Group, I think is the name of it. Um, there's also a Facebook group. If you want to stick to Facebook, there's one for that as well. And there's some other non-family search affiliated research groups as well that we try to link off to. 
uh, where you can just ask questions and query the world and uh, get some research help. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. That's thing. our purple button. Thank you. Yes, thank you for sharing that. Because um, we have talked multiple times about um, people with research questions while the library and the centers are closed going to the communities. And we've shown them how to get there from the help tab. But I think this is another great resource, especially as people are on and using the wiki. Okay, it is there any other things on this page that you want to share? Uh, so I do want to share an example of an international page, Yes. Um, because a lot of people, actually almost everybody, has ancestry from places that are not the United States. I know we're very US centric because that's where we're located. Um, One quick, I need to interrupt you. The wiki yeah. is free for everybody. You don't, there's no um, affiliation required. Um, people can even view the wiki without having an account, right? Yeah, it's yes. true. Yeah, you don't even have to use family search to use the wiki. So totally free for everybody. Everyone is welcome. Yeah, it's my favorite. I'm not biased at all. <laughs> okay, country, show us a country page. Country, um, so I'm gonna pick Norway. That's one of our uh, focus countries this year. So if you have Norwegian ancestry, that's great. If you don't, that's okay, I don't either. Um, so Norway here in this list, you can see the layout looks kind of like Indiana. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some information at the top, some getting started helps over here. Uh, and then we've got a map down here and a sidebar. Uh, this sidebar has a little bit different and the same record types as we have across the wiki, um, but we'll have things specific to that particular country. But a couple of things I wanna show you that are unique to some international countries. Uh, this one is particularly for the Scandinavian countries is um, a feast day calendar. So in Scandinavia and other places across Europe, when they would create church records uh, for baptisms, uh, especially they would use what's called a feast day. So um, in the book, they might write, you know, this child was baptized on the third Sunday after Easter. You're like, well, what day is that? Uh, we have calendars to tell you what day that was <laughs> in that year. So we list the calendar for every year of all those different feast days. Uh, what day was the second Sunday after Trinity? I don't know. Um, so that's something that is an example of country specific things that mm -hmm. people might never have heard of before, but you need to know if you're gonna do genealogy in that place. Yes, okay, th this is fantastic. And I like how you said every country page is gonna be different, right? It's gonna they be are. big. And so I have a question for you. Um, how do you know what each country needs? Is this where the library experts come in? Like who says, like, how did you figure all of that out? That's an excellent question. Um, this has come over, you know, just decades and decades of uh, a lot of research specialists at the Family History Library, their experience. They've helped compile a lot of this uh, for around the world. Other countries that we might not know a lot about, um, countries and areas of the world where maybe we don't have a lot of genealogy research experience, a lot of that will come from um, staff just researching things. Uh, so right now we just had one of our volunteers create a civil registration page for an island nation that we had never had a civil registration page before, but she went out searching the internet and looking up websites and archives and local governments to see what civil registration there was or wasn't for that country. So a lot of it comes from just experience and expertise of those at the Family History Library, those in the research community who want to contribute information, mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes from our own, our own digging. Okay, I, we have a request. Can you show the word lists in other languages? Oh, I was just going to show that. Oh, this yeah, is such yeah. a great, this yeah, is this such is a great thing. And then I have another question after that one. And everyone who's watching, we love your comments and questions and wiki specific questions we're taking today. Um, but if you have other questions, please post them in the comments. Okay, Amber, show us. This yes. is exciting. So we're on Norway right now. So I'll give you an example of the Norway word list and then I'll show you where you can find the other ones. Okay. So Norway, uh, for countries that don't speak English, we try to have a word list in the sidebar. And it typically is under this background section because the word list isn't a record type. Up here are record types. It's not a record type. It's just for reference. Uh, so over here we have Norwegian word list. 
And essentially, some of the word lists might be organized a little differently depending on the expert who created them. Mm -hmm. uh, but we try to accumulate all of the common genealogy words that you might see in records. Um, so some of these, these are just the A's. Um, we've got, I mean, this is the measure for, you know, two feet or 0.63 meters, charity, uh, communion, so many words that you might find in Norwegian records. So that's the one way to find the word list. And that's just Norway. I don't want to go through the entire thing because there's so okay. much on this okay. word list. But hold on a second. That is just super fascinating. And people are really loving that you're showing that. Um, so to restate this, there's a word list that translates common genealogy terms from that language into English. So those people who are searching records and you don't speak that language, this is the way that you can do that. I love all of the things that you're showing us that are here to serve and help our patrons and users. And I just really appreciate the detail here. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this. And like I said, continue asking questions. So does each yes. language, how, do you, okay, I don't know that you're gonna know this answer. Do you know how many word lists you have and how many different languages? I don't have a particular account, uh, okay. but I can show you a page that we have. Um, okay. If I can, I remember, I think I remember what the page is called. Yes, you can do like a live word, if I can spell word lists, genealogical word lists. Okay, here is a page of our word lists. Um, when we, whenever we create a word list, so these are something that I just deal with word lists all the time. And so in my brain, like, of course we have word lists and of course I know what they mean. And I forget that they're so cool to everyone else who's doing genealogy. Um, we have, I mean, here's an example of our list of of our word list. We've got uh, a basic Afrikaans list, Arabic, Armenian, Chinese, Czech, Danish, Dutch, Estonian, uh, Farsi, Finnish, French, German. I mean, we, we try to cover languages that people would encounter using written documents or other things in a language that they're researching that maybe they don't speak that particular language. Um, one of our newest word lists that we just created, I don't know if it made it onto this list yet or not, um, oh, what language was it? Latvian. We just did Latvian. Oh, it is over here. Yeah, oh, click on it. Just show it. A Latvian word list. Yeah, let's look at it because this is just so cool. Yes. So yeah. we will list sometimes over here uh, a geographic map showing the distribution of places in the world that speak that language. Uh, this is essentially just Latvia. I'm pretty sure it's like the only country that speaks Latvian. Um, we get like an introduction to the language. I mean, knowing that masculine nouns ending in singular are all of these and plural masculine nouns end in I, right? Some things that you might want to know when you're reading these documents and you come across a word. Okay, so down here, here's the word list. So we've got alphabetized by English on this side or by Latvian on this side. Uh, this particular list is sortable these little arrows right here. So we can sort this table uh, one way or the other alphabetically. Mm -hmm. So maybe I have a word in Latvian that I'm finding that starts with A, but I don't wanna go through all the English side to try to find every Latvian word that starts with A. So I can just click this little sort ascending and it will sort the whole thing to start with A. So I can find my word a little bit easier in this list. And I also, I think you can download this word list as well, right? If that's something that you're going to be doing a lot of research around? Good question. I actually have never, this particular one we can't, we unfortunately don't have a PDF available or attached of this particular one, but some of our word lists will have a little PDF attached on this side. Okay. Um, if you're doing a lot of Latvian research, uh, I would suggest bookmarking this page if you're using the internet, um, or you can, if you want to print the whole thing, you can print the whole thing or use a series of screenshots. Um, but if we do have a PDF version, we'll try to upload it here for you as well that okay. you can download. We have another question. Um, there's a Family History Center doing a service project to put a collection of research files online, online in specific person pages. Can they write a wiki page to tell people about their collection? Or That's an excellent question. Okay. How do yes. people can contribute to or suggest wiki content? Good question. Um, so there's a couple things at play here. Uh, the first is that this, I think you said, is coming from a family history center. Yes. Um, family history centers uh, have their own center pages within the wiki. So hopefully the center has used their page before. Um, and show, as, us, show us one. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
does the center have a name? I mean, we can take requests oh, if I don't want to put it in here. If not, no. I can just pick one. Just pick one. Yeah. Okay. So I haven't been to this center, but uh, I have family in Calgary. So okay. let's pick the Calgary Center. Okay. And it's RE because it's in Canada. So we didn't misspell it for all you United States people. Uh, okay. So you can see we've got information about this family history center, uh, addresses, a phone number, hours of operation, any holidays that they're closed. Uh, you can see they gave a nice notice up here that they're closed due to COVID-19, which is responsible. Mm -hmm. um, some policies, we have the names of their executive director. And it looks like they have a calendar of classes and things that they teach, which is very cool. So this is an example of a center page. They don't all look the same because every center is run differently. Um, but what you can do is as an editor of the wiki, you can create a wiki page and then link to that page from your center. So if you have specific uh, instructions for this project you want to do, you could create a new page um, titled, you know, instructions for, you know, adding resources to the, to the person page or something um, for the Calgary Alberta Family History Center or whatever your family history center is. Uh, and then you can, in your family history center page, make sure that you have a link there so people will know how to find those instructions. If okay. you have questions about editing, because um, I know that was the second question. I don't want to keep going. Stop me, Wendy. Do you have another oh, question? Oh, no, that's good. Going? I think the other thing is, um, what if someone just has a request, a research request that they know, like it's like a language or it's a country or something, and, and they can't find the info on the wiki, and I know you showed them how to use the community to go for questions, but is there a place on the wiki where people can say, I'm looking for, or I would like to contribute to, you know, is anything that's like that? That's an excellent question. Yeah, no, that's great. We love having community support uh, in the Family Search Wiki. So right now it's kind of small, so I'm going to um, highlight it with my mouse over here. On this left-hand sidebar, um, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, maybe that will be helpful. Okay. On this left-hand sidebar are a few links. We have a contact us, a report a problem, and a submit wiki content. So if you have content that you want to submit, maybe you are an expert in Latvian research and you know of a record type that's really important that we just don't have yet, uh, and you wanna submit that to the wiki, you can click submit wiki content and you can tell us, here's what should be on this page. And then we can tackle that from there. Um, if there's a problem, you can click report a problem. There's a typo on this page or this link is bad. The website has been bought out and now it's something totally not related to genealogy anymore. Um, you can report a problem there as well. Uh, and then if you have any like requests for things you want to be added to the Family Search Wiki, uh, use the contact us feature through Family Search uh, and that will get directed to uh, a queue that we have of um, feedback from patrons about the Wiki and we can go through those. Oh, fantastic. Okay. I I want you to tell us that you said that there's a sort of a newish product that's in beta. There is. And, and we want to know that because people that are joining us live, we try to give them some good information that maybe they can't find yet on yes. the website. So will you show us that? And then we'll take some more wiki questions. So if you have wiki specific questions, um, let us know in the in the chat. But Amber is going to give us a sneak peek of an upcoming something. Yes. And it's exciting. It is so exciting. Oh, I'm excited to show you. Okay, so I'm gonna click this wiki home over here in the corner just to go back to the home page. And because I zoomed in, the page looks less guampus. So I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so this is that main wiki page I told you about. You can get to it from search and research wiki from the family search header up here. Okay, so we've started to slowly announce this at some conferences. So if you have heard of it, then you're in the loop already, but most people have not heard of this. So I want to talk about it and have you guys try it out for us. So as a wiki team, we have created a new product that we call guided research. So I'm gonna tell you really quick uh, what our goal is with guided research, and then I will show you the tool and how to use it. Oh, we're so, so excited. Everyone is just oh, like, we were getting comments. They're saying they're excited. And I'm going to be quiet, but I just want to jump in. Okay, yeah, guided the comments. <laughs> okay, guided research. So this particular product is aimed at people who have some genealogy experience, maybe in one location, but they're brand new to doing genealogy somewhere else. So say that you have done genealogy work for, um, you've done research for all of your ancestors in, you know, the 
the Midwest United States and you're really comfortable researching in the Midwest, but somebody comes to you and says, oh, you're a genealogist. Can you help me find my ancestors in Lancashire, England? And you're like, I have no idea how to do English research, right? Because because you're, once you're a genealogist, you're an expert in everywhere uh, for some people. So, so what do we do to give people kind of a springboard of research using the research knowledge they already have to make them feel comfortable in doing some preliminary research in a new place is our goal. And we're going to simplify it for you. So this is the main page. I'm not just here for no reason. This is how we get to guided research. From this main page of the research wiki, if you scroll down below the map, uh, we have a little book with a magnifying glass right here. It says guided research. Um, when we update our main page of the website, it will be in a different place, but uh, it will still be on this main page, so you won't lose it. Um, guided research, so I'll click here, prioritize online databases. So essentially what our goal is here is to say, you know what? Genealogy online has expanded so much, right? Like it seems like every website has birth records for this state or for this country. How do I know where's the best place to look for these records? Um, it's like you're playing one of those game shows. Like, is it behind door number one or door number two? Like, you just kind of have to play this guessing game and trying everything. Uh, but what we've done is for these select countries here in green, this is still a limited experience. Um, we're still testing it out, so we don't have it for everywhere just yet. But for these places in green, what we've done is we've found all the online databases for birth, marriage, and death for these countries. And we've, we tell you at the beginning, these ones are the best. These ones have the most records. These ones have okay. the most coverage. So try these first. So to really kind of streamline your process so you don't kind of get bogged down searching through door number one and door number two across the whole internet. Okay, so, so question. Is this yes. kind of like um, when you're buying something on Amazon and you want to buy, there's a ton of different items, but you want to pick the one that has the most reviews. And so you're like, you know, which you know, chair or which vacuum or which blah, blah, blah. And then you, you look and you trust the experts or the people like, that's kind of what it seems like to me. Is that a good way to describe it? It is. Yeah. Or like when you're on Amazon and you, you search for your list of results and everyone knows the first thing you do when you go to Amazon is you click price low to high in the corner, <laughs> right? Everybody does it. Um, so it's kind of like that. We want to prioritize and I, I want to see the best first. I want to see um, what, what has the highest possibility of giving me success at the beginning instead of wow. stumbling upon it halfway through my process. Right. Okay. So this is exciting. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to show you, oh, what's a good example. They're all good examples. Let's pick a county in England. Okay. Um, each state in the United States has its own option here. We can use these zoom in or zoom out buttons, but I'm just using the scroll roller on my mouse. So I'm going to scroll in really quick. And we have uh, specific pages for each of these places. I'm just going to pick England. And Beverly and Diana are just loving this. They're saying this is so great. So oh, good. Please use it. Uh, we want some feedback to know if, it's, if you're successful using this tool. OK, so before we even give you databases, for those of you who have experience doing English research, we know that we kind of need to know the county in England before we start researching because records are organized at the county level. Um, so we want to know the county first. So if we know the county, we'll let you select that particular county page to go to. If you don't know the county, we'll give you some ideas of um, how, to, how to find what county your ancestor might have lived in. So I'm not going to go too much into that. You can peruse that on your own time. Uh, it's very exciting. Some ideas of, of methodology in the genealogy terms of how to find information. Sorry, my computer's a little shaky. Uh, there's not an earthquake, but I think I'm just shaky. Okay. Oh, yeah. We can see it. It looks steady on my view. Oh, perfect. I'm glad because it's not steady on mine. <laughs> um, so I'm going to say I do know the county. I'm going to use Lancashire as the example. So I'm going to say I know the county. Um, we have popped up right here all the counties of England. So I am going to click Lancashire. Okay. So you can see we have select the type of information you're looking for, birth, marriage, or death. Right now, our goal is, is vital records, those birth, marriage, and death. Um, we currently don't have guided research for censuses. We don't have guided research for probate records or for immigration records. Um, our goal is essentially birth, marriage, and death because those are the key dates that people need to trace their genealogy back. 
And so let's say my ancestor, I need to find a marriage for my ancestor. And I think he was married in Lancashire County. So I'm going to click marriage and it will drop down with some suggestions of places to start. So I have a start here option and it gives me the dates that this database covers. So I know if my ancestor was married in 1526, I know they probably won't be in this database. Um, but it says, you know what, the best place to search for marriages in Lancashire is actually at the Lancashire Online Parish Clerk website. So I can click this link and it will take me to that website that I can search there. That's now, awesome. if, it's like a shortcut. It is. So you don't have to Google it. You don't have to comb through all the wiki pages for it, even though they're good pages. Um, we give it to you right at the front. But if you don't find it, maybe for some reason you can't find your ancestor in Online Parish Clerk. Maybe the index was weird or... Um, maybe they left off part of their name. And so if you can't find it there, we'll give you the next best. So the next best is um, our family search collections of Lancashire marriages. So clicking this link, you'll search all the, rel all the related family search collections at once, which is really nice. Instead of searching just one individual at a time, this link will let you search them all at once. And uh, we're actually working with John Huff, who we had uh, conversation with last week on Facebook Live about uh, improving this experience as well. So we're really excited to use their search tool to search all those collections. Oh, this now is these... great because um, when we looked at like the Indiana page, right, there were so many records and that's yeah. awesome. But if maybe you're just starting or you want help, um, this is the way that it just streamlines it all and gives you the, the, the highest chance of success. It does, yeah. And of course we can't guarantee 100% success with this because maybe your ancestor's record was burned and it, we can't find it, right? Um, but if it does exist, these are the best places that we've found of where you should search for it. Now, these two are great, um, but what if you still can't find it? Because we know that so many people have been trying and trying to find their ancestors and just still can't find that record. And so we have down here, what else you can try. So if you can't find them here, come to this section, click on any of those links and it will take you to um, what we call our, I can't I find the record page. Mm -hmm. And we give you examples of more databases because there's probably not just two Lancashire you know, marriages databases. Uh, we have all of these that you can search as well that your ancestor might be in or some collections that are only images that you can't, that aren't indexed. So you have to go through them manually. Mm -hmm. uh, so we give you some more suggestions. Um, or some substitute records. Genealogists hopefully know what this means. Um, records that could have marriage information that aren't the marriage record itself. So uh, kind of some uh, going around the back door kind of ideas of how to find that. We also will give tips to improve your searching. So maybe your ancestor is in that collection, you're just searching wrong, or maybe their name was misspelled. Uh, so we try to give you some ideas of how to improve your searching. And then we talk about, you know, here's why the record might not exist um, in case you're searching and searching and maybe you shouldn't be searching because it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, you know, mandatory marriages didn't start until 1837, um, but it also universal compliance didn't happen until 1874. So uh, that could be a reason why you can't find your record there. So that is essentially the purpose of guided research to send you to the best places first. And then if you can't find it to kind of make a teaching tool of other ways that you can attack this issue. Okay, I, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And like you said, that's found in, on the homepage, the wiki page. Yes. Guys research on the bottom and you spoke about the fact that the homepage or this main page will be updated, but it will still be very prevalent. And is it called yes. guided research? That's what it's gonna be called? Mm -hmm. Yep, it'll, it'll say guided research. Yep, so okay. you'll be able to see it there. And if you can't find it here for any reason, um, but you know you want guided research for England. Um, I'll take you to the England page really quick. England genealogy, just a regular wiki page. And guided research will be up here in the sidebar as well. Okay. So in case you can't find it on the main page for any reason, it'll still be on the country page. Awesome. Amber, this is great information. Hey. Like you have covered so many things. Um, I think we have a couple of questions and yes. um, is there like, is there a training class on how to use the wiki? Like if people, besides this, which I think is fantastic. And like we said, you can come back and watch this. Yes. If people want to learn more or dive deeper into research, you talked about communities, but is there any sort of training or classes available? 
Good question. So there are a few classes that talk about the wiki. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe there is one in the family search in the learning center. Okay. So I don't know if we've covered learning center yet, but in family search up here under help, uh, we have the learning center that's full of uh, recorded webinars and tutorials from family history library staff and other professionals. And I believe there's at least one or two classes uh, about the wiki in here. So if you can't come back and watch this recording for any reason, uh, come back and check the Learning Center. Okay, great recommendation. Um, is there anything else that you want to share with us before we kind of wrap up today? This was just um, I, I, very inspiring and informative. I love it. Oh, I'm so glad. Um, oh gosh, I'm trying to think if I have anything else I want to talk to you guys about. I have a lot I want to talk to you guys about, but I don't want to spend a ton of time. Um, this is something I, we can go over. Um, we mentioned in guided research a little bit about um, substitute records. Uh, mm -hmm. Those other records that can give you information that isn't that particular record, like birth information that doesn't come from a birth certificate. Um, so we're on the England page, so I might as well talk about it right here. Um, so on some of our country pages, we have what is called a record finder. Uh, and this is a tool that I have found very useful in the past. You can see in the sidebar right here uh, is record finder. And so if you're trying to find a piece of information and you want to know what documents could give you that, we give you some suggestions. So if you're trying to find a birthplace of an ancestor, we tell you, you know, try these records first. So we have a uh, census, try the census civil registration and church records first to find that birthplace. But other records that could give you that are obituaries or newspapers, occupational information and military records. So we have this big chart full of lots of kinds of information uh, and then telling you what kinds of records could give you that in case you can't find that record at the beginning. Uh, and these can be really helpful, especially if you're a little bit new to researching in a particular place. Uh, if your country has a record finder tool, um, most of our, our major countries, uh, meaning the ones that people research in a lot, um, a lot of those have a record finder tool. Uh, try this out and use it and that can give you ideas because some people might search for a birth record and not find it and think it's the end and they're never going to find the birth information ever again. Uh, but there's some options of ways that you can attack this issue from different angles. Oh yeah, that's a great recommendation and we've got a lot of people um, saying great job. You're a great presenter. Um, oh, fantastic. You. And yes, someone asked, is, is this um, stream archived? It is. So you can come back and watch it. And Amber, you showed us how basic tips. You showed us how we can suggest content. You showed us how to contact the wiki team to report a problem. You gave us a sneak peek of guided research and really great information. Um, so thank you, like you were fantastic and I loved getting a chance to chat with you about this. Thank you, it was so much fun. I love talking about the wiki to people. Uh, it really is, and we like to, you know, our little uh, team, oh, no one appreciates us just because oh. no one knows that this thing is here, right? Yes. People do appreciate it when they use it, but uh, for some reason, it's just something that's not on everyone's radar. So we would love for you guys to use it. Let us know what you think. Uh, if you have content that you want to help us with, let us know. Uh, and we would love any feedback you guys can give. Awesome. And I, and I think that's what's so cool about the tool is it's created based on what people are looking for and need. And you're sharing resources outside of family search, right? You're sending people places all over. So, okay. Yeah. So as we wrap up, I want to remind everyone that um, tomorrow, there is a Spanish live stream with Debbie Gertler and Karina, and they're talking about Spanish records. And then next Wednesday, same time, four o'clock Mountain Daylight Time, we're going to actually have a panel of some of our product managers. And this will be a great time to ask questions about family search products. We'll have Ron Tanner, who was on before, and he'll be joined by Todd Powell and John Alexander. And so they're going to represent a, a, a a wide area of product expertise. And we are gonna take questions and just get to know about why and how things are built at Family Search. And Amber, thank you. And people can go to the communities to find and ask research questions. And then you talked about the Family History Library webinars from the Learning Center, and they're still going on. Like the webinars, right? They're still, so people join, you know, feel free to join those. You'll, you'll get to have presentations like Amber without me interrupting. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, it's good to have Wendy because I mean, she catches when I'm going too fast over things that are just casual to me, but are important for you guys to know. So oh, you good. are so fantastic. So thanks everybody. And we will see you next Wednesday or tomorrow. Um, and like, let us know what you would like us to continue doing. If you're interested in certain topics, let us know in the comments. So, okay. Thank you.